Welcome to another episode of Moments. Um, as you know, Moments is a safe space where we talk about um, stories that have that give us life lessons and that give us strategies, but that have to do with life. It's a really safe space that we talk about anything from work, um, marriage, anything that just that just helps someone in life. And today. I have an amazing, amazing guest, my sister, Patience. Uh, she's a young lady, <laughs> young, because we are all young. And she has a beautiful story. Um, she has an amazing place, which is called Between Wine, Between Coffee and Wine. And today we're really going to explore that story. My sister, Patience, good afternoon. And how are you? <laughs> Hi, Nyenge. Thanks for having me. So, um, before we start, I know who you are, mm -hmm. but I want our guests to really understand who patience is, who's patience, what drives you, what, uh, what, make, what, what creates the person that you are, what makes you become passionate mm -hmm. about what you do. Okay. So, I'm patience, and um, I'm a sister, and I'm a friend, and I am one person who's so passionate about Zimbabwe, about the continent, about opportunities. I'm passionate about travel. I'm passionate about wine and coffee. <laughs> My, <Cheers to> that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur by, by nature, very serial entrepreneur. I'm always looking out for the next big opportunity. Um, so basically, that's who I am. Oh, fantastic. So, okay, because I'm a marketer mm -hmm. by heart, I, I need to understand mm -hmm. between coffee and wine. Yeah. Why? I mean, this name, how did it come about? What made you come up with this name? Okay. So for, for, for me, this name was after the realization that life really is happening between having a cup of coffee or having a glass of wine, because those are deemed the best two pickup drinks in, 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 in the world. So for me, um, because I'm an avid traveler, every time I traveled, I, want, I didn't want the restrictions of choosing either one of the two. Um, if you're jet lagged and you wanted a cup of coffee, coffee should be made available or if you just felt like a glass of wine on holiday at nine in the morning with your breakfast, <laughs> no judging, because that's what life is all about. Life is never that structured. One moment you are in the office and doing your work and you're having a, uh, your cup of coffee, or sometimes you're actually on holiday and at nine in the morning you feel like having a glass of wine. So that's... That's what life is all about. It's never structured that way. Uh, it's never restricted that way. So life just happens in between any one of the, <laughs> of the drinks. I can so relate. I can so relate to that because I actually remember like going on holiday where um, sometimes we'll be sitting, and the husband and I are sitting and looking at the time and like, okay, it's 12 o'clock, it's time for wine. <laughs> But you know what? The older we've got, I've just realized that you know what? Any time is wine time. Is wine time. So I'm really, really excited that you you started this. So yeah. I want to I want you to take our our viewers and our listeners through the process of setting up this business, because I know that so many things happen. You know, you have a plan, mm. but things don't always go according to plan. Sure. What is it that keeps you going? What is it that kept you going setting mm. up this business? What are the lessons that you got from this and how would you explain to someone what what it is that drove you mm. to wake up in the morning and mm. to come on and continue to push this business? For me, I, I, I'm, I'm a very avid traveler, like I've just mentioned. Um, and, and, and Africa has been my playground. Um, I, I remember traveling and doing three multiple destinations at a, at a given time. So you get into Mozambique, drive to Swaziland and go into, into South Africa and come back with life experiences. So as I was setting up this business, it was, it, it, I wouldn't say it was a very easy process, um, but what drove this whole business is passion. And as you look around, whatever we have in this shop is curated and, and well thought through. 
Um, so as we started, it was during COVID. Everyone was on lockdown. Um, and family was my first test palate. <laughs> mm. So I, I made my family taste every single wine and every coffee that I'd ever experienced. Lucky for me, I'd just traveled from Rwanda, so I had a lot of Rwandan coffee. So I would wake up and make coffee and make everyone drink it. Um, as the lockdown restrictions eased, I got friends coming over um, and we would make lunch. Pork bones and, 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 and I and remember those pork bones and some good wine and the sadza. And the sadza, yeah. Mm. So for me, it's always been experiencing um, wine and coffee uh, using, pairing with, with, with products that are, that are relatable. I know we, we read a lot of, oh, pair your steak with, but sometimes it's about experimenting. So that's how we started. From my lounge, sharing with friends, moved the business into my garage um, when we thought we had scaled enough. And one of my mentors challenged me to scale it up. And, and then we started looking for space in, in a commercial location. And I must say it wasn't easy to get commercial space because all the big shopping malls are asking you where else you operate, mm -hmm. um, what business you do. Mm -hmm. Because also I'm, I, I'm, I'm assuming they're uh, guarding their rental income. Mm -hmm. So it was not easy to get space in, in, in the prime locations. But one property owner in a prime location trusted us, mm -hmm. trusted the vision, and they gave us space in, 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 a, in a commercial area. And it's been leaps and bounds since then. Um, and we, we've, we've learned a lot of things. We've learned what people prefer. We've learned how people want to consume um, our products. And it's been a learning journey for us since then. Okay. From what you said, so the, the two things that I want to just make a follow-up on. Yeah. One, um, my experience with most Zimbabweans, when, when you talk wine, yep. they just want the cheap wine. Yep. As long as it's cheap and it will get me drunk, mm. it's okay. It's okay. Um, nothing to do with the taste and, and, and the palate. And I know because like when my mom comes with uh, her friends, sometimes they'll come and they're like, do you have wine? I'm like, yeah. They're like, wine, I'm going to shatter. Mm -hmm. You know, that kind of thing. It, it, so, and then they want a certain type of wine, which I hate, mm -hmm. sweet wine. <laughs> so <laughs> I want you to take me through that whole process of, of educating and how you've really managed that process of saying to people, look, this is a good wine. Yeah. So buy it at this price. Right. That's one. Two, you talked about family and friends. Uh, take me through the journey of sisterhood and what sisterhood has meant to you uh, as you were opening up your business and growing and scaling up yeah, yeah. as well. So, so uh, you know, with, with wine, it's, it's a personal preference, really. Um, I will relate to my mother as well. I, taste, I made a taste one sweet rosé. And for her now, wine is about rosés. So she will come and say, I want a rosé. <laughs> yes, it's like your standard go-to. It's the standard <laughs> go-to. So a lot of, um, you know, wine experiences are learned experiences. So you have to go through different wines and, and taste different wines until you come to a point where you say, this is my preferred wine or this is my go-to wine. And uh, we've invested a lot of time and a lot of money in bringing in sommeliers from South Africa predominantly for now, um, where they take us through the journey of wine. Um, and normally it's one vineyard that they profile and they take us through, you know, what is, a, what is, a, what is an aperitif wine, what is a, a wine to pair with um, your... Um, your white meats, what is your wine to pair with um, your red meats, and what is just the wine to have by your poolside. What is your dessert wine, which is also quite sweet. So depending on how you're having that sweet wine, it, it makes a difference in how it tastes. So it's about exploring your palate and coming up with what works for your palate. What do you like? Do you like... We, we, we like sadza. If I'm having my sadza, I will have my sadza with beef bones and a very good shiraz, and I'll still enjoy my wine. Mm. Um, so it's, it's, it's exposing people to what wine is and 
how you can consume your wine and experience your wine. And, and every wine tasting, we learn something new because whoever is taking us through the tasting has different angles and different experiences um, to that particular wine, how it was made, how it was stored, um, and, and things like that, and which, which ultimately bring your final taste to, to the glass. So we, we continue doing these wine tastings. So it's one opportunity where you can taste up to six wines um, at, uh, on a budget. Wow. Yeah, you, 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 you're having your wine paired, six different types of wines, and then you come up with what works for you. Mm. Um, so that's how we've sort of exposed our customers to different wines and what wine to drink immediately what wine to store mm -hmm. for those that are collectors like me. <laughs> what do you keep in your cellar? cellar. Mm -hmm. And what do you drink immediately? What do you put in your kitchen cupboard for cooking? And what do you put in your cellar? So it's, it's those experiences. So people are teachable. People continue to learn and people continue to appreciate. And then the other thing that you asked me was on, um, uh, on Sister, Sister Wood. Wood. Yeah. Um, I, I think this business have, has sustained because of my sisters around me. Um, we try and create a center of excellence through mm. the people that we meet here. Mm. So when you come for a tasting, you're sitting next to Nyenge, you're sitting next to Dora, the event producer, who's been doing our events since we started. You're sitting next to Lucille, who's a real estate agent, who's been helping us um, position ourselves um, in, in, in wherever we open shop. Um, you're sitting next to the sommelier who has traveled all the way. So for me, it has become a networking space. It has become a space where we meet and just be ourselves and ask even what we deem the stupid questions about mm. wine or coffee. <laughs> and for me, Sisterhood as well has been my immediate family. Um, my sister knows when I'm stressed and she's always looking out for me and making sure that my dreams come to fruition because I do talk about what I aspire to be. Uh, my immediate family has been my, my pillar of strength because I, I, I'm very open um, and very vulnerable with them. So everyone around me knows my dreams and aspirations. I've been vulnerable even with the team that I work with at, at the, the coffee shop. They second guess me and they know what is important to me. Yeah. <laughs> so those are the sort of things that um, for me, Sisterhood has helped me um, because on my own, I don't think I would have ever created anything like this. So I, 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 I rely a lot on my friends and I give as much as I receive from my friends mm. when they're having their events. I'm their number one supporter. Mm. Um, some of them have become my marketing managers mm. because they will tell every other person that they're talking to about the, 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 the wines and coffees that they will find in our mm. shop. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh. Oh, that's so, I mean, for me, that's so exciting because I think, um, you know, in the past, we've always known that um, people always say that, you know, women, you tear each other down. Women, you don't bring each other up. And I think we're in a new era where uh, sisters are building each other up and, and uh, truly supporting each other and, you know, like giving all 110% to mm -hmm. say, you know what, I want to see you win. Mm -hmm. And I really love the, what you've just said about that. So going on again, touching on that whole sisterhood and what makes, uh, how they've supported you. I, I want to know how um, your support base, mm -hmm. how your support base has made sure that, one, I know you said your sister is there, she understands you when you're not fit, when things are not going well, when you're stressed. But how that support, support base has made you want to make sure you succeed. Mm -hmm. Want to make sure that, you know what? I don't want to let these people down. Yeah, yeah. What is it that the, that support base has, has, has done for you? Yeah. There's always a thing about promising or telling people when you're not thinking it. Um, when you're sitting and having a conversation, you're like, you know, I'd, I'd like to open five shops. 
<laughs> and one of your friends is there. <laughs> I've got a lot of accountability partners. A lot of my friends are my accountability partners. Fast forward two months after, oh, so where are we? Where are we with, with your second and third shop? Like, uh, I'm not uh, really feeling that. that. Yes. Did I say that? <laughs> You're like scratching your head. Like, like, yeah. And also getting people saying to you, I've found space in this in this location do you think it's suitable so you're always on your tours to make sure that what you promised because there's somebody who's checking you so it ceases to be a talk show mm -hmm. uh it, it it becomes um the thing that people can make you um accountable for, mm -hmm. for, for. um so for me that that has always been my radar um you know once in a while when somebody says to me, oh, by the way, I heard you do this. Where are you? Mm. You're like, mm. uh, okay, I said that. Uh, I must I deliver. deliver. Mm. So it keeps me on, on my tours and um, trying to deliver and, and excel because we don't have a lot of centers of excellence for startups. Mm. A lot mm. of them are makeshift, you know, mm. responses are mm. poor, um, adverts are not quite... You know, as soon as I post something on our social media page, somebody will say, spell check. Mm. This is not right. Mm. So I know that there are people that are out watching. there rooting for me and watching and making me accountable, mm. which, which has kept me going and trying to improve myself and mm. be the best version of myself. Oh, but because you're an amazing person as well and, and, and an equally excellent person yourself as well. So because of that, I, I just want to understand because, I mean, look at Zim. Yeah. Um, a lot of people want to live. Mm. Some people are like saying this is not the right time to open anything. Mm -hmm. What would you say to some young lady out there here in Zim mm. or who's just thinking of starting up something but thinking, hmm, Zim is not the right place? Mm. What is it that kept you going and what is it that can keep them going? going? Okay. So your passion is the biggest ingredient to this whole thing. So if you're very passionate about something, it ceases to be about work. It's about your lifestyle. Mm. If you're going to travel, if you're an avid traveler like I am, I'll still travel. It doesn't mean that I will leave the country and go to the next amazing destination. I'll still take a drive into Marondera and find interesting things to do in Marondera still. Mm -hmm. So your passion keeps you going because it's who you are. Mm. You can't change that about mm. yourself. Um, and then about Zim being um, an, 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 an economy where you don't want to invest, I think Zim is actually ripe for, for investment because we have a lot of people or we've all traveled quite a bit um, and we've seen certain cultures and certain opportunities that we should come and try out in, 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 in our locality, in mm. the way we are comfortable, mm. where you know that if I leave home at 10 in the morning, I'll be in town at 10.30. So you can sort of judge that whole thing. Yeah. Uh, and you're not in some country where, you know, you, you, traffic jams are real. I know our traffic jams can be crazy, but... Border road. <laughs> but you can sort of time it out and you've got people that are closer to you on the ground. I can pick up the phone and say, Nyenge, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to be in the village. I'm running late. Please, can you go to the shop? I'll call the shop owner and tell them that you'll pick up this thing for me. Can you pay for me? Mm. So we, we, we can localize our problems and mm. we can learn around our problems and we can, you know, uh, solve for, 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 for Zimbabwe. And I think if you're ever going to scale, you can scale coming out of your comfort zone. So if we make mistakes, we make them fast, we learn from them fast, and then we move on and, and try again. So Zim for me is ripe for, for experiments, if I must call it that, mm -hmm. and entrepreneurship. Uh, we are predominantly an SME market. So we should actually be thinking, if I start up my business, um, can I employ two other people and make the next person be in a better position than mm. they're in, in right now? Can we teach? Can we can we train yeah. in, 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 in the environment that we're in? Uh, and for that young person, I mean, look, if you have an idea, write it down. Write it down, go through it over and over again. 
talk about it as much as you can. Pitch it to every other person so that people can fine tune and sharpen your ideas. If if you've got that one, you know, passion that's keeping you awake every day, this is the time to write it down. This is the time to pitch it because around your circle you can pitch it and people can tell you, ah, sure. It, this no won't work in some <laughs> what are you smoking yes. but you know you could be in a different environment where people are like eh, maybe from where you come from maybe it's possible mm. but test it out here mm. um, write it down review it try it on a small scale scale it gradually organically and and until you you get to where where you want to be and if it doesn't work it's okay you can you can dump try it and again. yeah try again as long as you wake up and the sky is blue and the, the day starts, you can, you can go at it again. So there they are always opportunities and moments to keep trying. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I love that, the moments to keep trying. Mm. So when things go wrong and everything fails on today, let's say today, mm. and you go home, yeah. what would your night be like if you're feeling like, huh? Today I'm done. I'm done. What would your night be like? A hot shower and then cooking. I can cook up a storm. I can cook for an army and cook my favorite things, experiment with things, uh, with food. I experiment a lot of uh, my ideas with food because for me, cooking is a process. So I break down the cooking process and I also subconsciously break down whatever problem I'm having because in my quiet time I'm thinking through where did I go wrong why am I even doing this what else can I could I have done better who should I be having a conversation with um, I, I, I think um, my, my mentor has relentless conversations with me where I'm second guessing and I'm like no it doesn't work and you know you get a different perspective mm. so you those are the times to do it. I'm at home, I'm relaxed, and I know I can call on my network. And they mm. won't say, ah, you're calling me at 8, I won't be able to talk to you. Mm. Can we talk at 8 in the morning mm. tomorrow? Um, I know those are the times where, I suppose, those are the moments where <laughs> we sharpen each other exactly. and say, okay, I've got one mentor who will say to me, send me what you're thinking in the next 10 minutes mm. in a document. Mm. So it ceases mm. a, uh, being about a conversation. Mm. It becomes what I've put down. And the mm. minute you put it down, you, take you it know, it becomes seriously. something that, that is serious. So for me, my home is my sanctuary. Mm. Uh, I, 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 I relax. I rest. Mm. I, I, I take off the high heels. Oh, anyway. yeah. <laughs> and then I'm walking barefooted and I'm thinking. And that's my space to be vulnerable. If I must cry and scream, that's the space for me to do that. Yeah. No, I love that. Yeah. Um, I'm the same. I love to cook. Um, and I'll cook up a storm. And in the process, I'll cook up a storm. I have a glass of wine. Yeah. And I won't eat what I've cooked. But <laughs> do you know what you said that really resonated with me was being able to have people to call on. Yep. And two, being able to reflect on the day. Mm. I think that self-reflection, a lot of people do not do it. And self-reflection really helps. Mm. Because if we don't self-reflect, we never grow. We never grow. We never grow and we won't reach out to people. Um, so you talked a lot about mentors, mm. your mentors. Mm. Tell me the importance of mentors in your life and the importance of mentors for other people as well. Mm. So it's a mentorship for me, a people that um, some have gone through the journey. Maybe not in the same line, but they've gone through entrepreneurship. Mm. Um, and they can tell you that, ah, when I started my business, this was my blind sight. You need to look out for this. Um, and there's a lot of self-doubt when, when things go wrong in, in your business. So you kind of say to yourself, ah, you know, what, what, what have I done? But you, sometimes you need somebody who can check you in the, the, the conversation that you're having with yourself. Mm. Say, okay, so you failed because what? Mm. But not that they're easy on me. They actually say, but why would you start a business without a business plan? What's, what, what's wrong with you? Mm, exactly. So sometimes you need to hear that because mm. the they moments where you do things on impulse and 
it, for me, it has been very important because it 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 grounds me. I I come back to reality, and I I I come out of the conversation with things to do because they'll ask the pertinent questions. Mm. Well, okay, so what are you thinking about this? What are you thinking about that? Who are you talking to about mm. marketing? Who are you talking about your social media presence? Who are you talk? Where are you hiring from? Why are you having hiring issues? Who are you hiring? Mm. So th those kind of things make you set up businesses professionally and also check your blind spots. Mm. So my mentors have been there to, as a punching bag, and also for them to check me when I am not doing things that I should be doing and giving me, you know, uh, checkpoints to say, oh, in our last conversation a month ago, this is where we're supposed to be. Where are we now? Mm. So you can't dodge that question mm. month on month. Otherwise, you end up dodging the, the, the whole, whole project <laughs> and the whole person. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So for me, mentorship has been very important because it's it's what has kept me in check mm. and 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 check my thoughts, check my my targets. Are they aggressive enough? Mm. Um, is there more that I can do? You know. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. So, I know we've talked about wine, 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 mm. wine. Mm. Now, let's go to coffee. Mm. Why coffee? And, I mean, Zim is a tea drinking country. It's a tea drinking country. Uh, but why coffee? I mean, I love coffee. Yeah. And that's from when I was young because of my influence on my parents. Mm. But predominantly, Zim is a tea drinking country. True. So, what made you go for coffee? Okay. Mm. So I went for coffee because I'm all about experiences. <laughs> you want to bring new experiences to, to people. I mean, nothing beats a cup of Tanganda tea. So if I went for tea, <laughs> I would have to do one up against uh, Tanganda. Mm. But being uh, uh, um, a tea drinking country, we're also a coffee producing country. Um, and for me, coffee has been about blending the coffee. It's not just about single destination coffees that people talk about uh, that I want a single destination coffee. But I think also, you know, your blended coffees bring out the characters in coffee, the, the aromas that you get in, in your coffees. So in my travels, when I did a lot of African travel, I, 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 I was exposed to Rwandan coffee. I was exposed to Ethiopian coffee. I was exposed to Kenyan coffee. And then I also... Uh, came across a barista who then said to me, "Let's let's blend these coffees and oh, see wow. what what we come up with, with. you know." Um, and you know, when they talk about the acidities of the soils in different countries, it begins to make sense. And as a result, I have come to appreciate coffee even more. And also, it's a pickup uh, drink, and you know, you just brewing a cup of coffee <laughs> in the morning gets you awake yeah. so for me life is about your two pickups mm. either when you wake up or mm. when you go to bed it doesn't mm. matter what time you're waking up or going mm. to bed so mm. the two pickups have been very important to balance me out mm. you, you know mm. waking up to a good cup brew of, of coffee, coffee. Or going to bed on a lovely yeah. glass of wine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is so related. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's why coffee for me is is that important. So we are roasting our own coffee beans. We're bringing in different destination coffees wow. and roasting from here and packing for you and grinding for you. So if you want to enjoy a cup of coffee or experiment with a cup of coffee, come through. If you oh, want wow. to take the coffee beans home. We'll pack for you, and you can experiment with your own coffees at home. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is just, it's so exciting. And, and this coffee journey that you're talking about, oh, my gosh. You know, <laughs> I, I am such a coffee lover and a wine lover and mm. a meat lover. <laughs> so I always make my friends laugh that um, when I'm fasting, mm. I've stopped doing six to six because, for me, I can spend the whole day without eating because I'm so busy. Yeah. But I've learned that if I really, really am serious about my fast, I fast about I fast from coffee, uh -huh. I fast from <laughs> wine, I fast from meat, because I really, really struggle. That. Because those are the things that I love. And when I walk in and I smell coffee, and my heart is just thinking, I just want a cup of coffee. But I've said I'm not <laughs> drinking coffee for the next ten days. It's, yeah, a it's a struggle. So I really love coffee. And 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 when you just say to me the 
the mix, the blending of the coffee. You know, you're so used to wine, uh, blend, not coffee. Not coffee. So I encourage a lot of people to come, try yeah. out the blended coffee. Yeah. It'll be quite an experience for you. Mm. So just to close us out, you know, um, I just want you to talk about a life lesson or life lessons. Mm. Um, moments of life lessons that you'd like to give to our viewers out there mm. so that they can continue to persevere, mm. so they don't give up. Or so right now after watching, they don't think, oh, patience is privileged, or <laughs> is privileged, that's why they are where they are. I just want you to give those few life lessons to just encourage yeah. our viewers out there mm. to not give up yeah. and to follow their dreams and their passions. Yeah. So I a privilege. I wish I was privileged. <laughs> so yeah, you know, I, I, I grew up in the ghetto, to be honest with you. Um, but everything that I've done, I've always believed. Um, first, I had self-belief. And I, I had a family that believed in me. They still do. They have no choice. <laughs> they believe in me. And um I think I'm actually just a passionate person. Whatever I truly believe in, I'm passionate about it and I go for it. Um, negative conversations, you need to get me to, uh, to rock bottom to begin to, to speak negatively about myself. I think I, 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 I always treat life as if I'm the superstar in this whole thing. Yay. <laughs> Yeah, because because it's your mind. Once your mind gets into the gutter, to come out of it takes even more effort. Um, that's why I surround myself with people that are speaking positively, that are showing me where I've come from, because the tendency is to bury your head and go for it full throttle. And sometimes you don't turn and look and say, ah, not so long ago, we were in a garage. Now mm. we are in a shop and we're looking for additional space. So life lessons for me have to self-believe. Believe in the people that are around you, be it your staff complement, be it your, your sisters, be it your, um, your family. Believe that they have the best interest for you. Mm. It's easy to just look at them and say, mm, what does Nyinge want out of me? <laughs> <laughs> but it, believe in the process and, and give it your all. Mm. If you fail, fail and say to yourself, this doesn't work for me mm. because I've tried it, I've given it my all, it doesn't work. Oh, and me. be okay with, with that decision ah. to say, you know what, I've tried it, it doesn't work. Yeah. And there's nothing more um, more real than your self story. Mm. Your, the mm. story about your own perspective is the truest story that you can ever go through. Mm. Um, so, you know, it's not about they are saying this. Mm. Um, it's not about, oh, did you see this post? It says this. Mm. But what is your experience yes. with that particular aspect? So oh, if your story yeah. is like, is Zim is good, then it Zim is good. Mm. <laughs> it, it you can't you can't you can't borrow um, feelings from other people. Otherwise, mm. you lose your self identity. Mm. So it's 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 about following your passion. Mm. Follow who you are. Love what you do. Mm. Love who you are. Love where you are, and mm. make the best out of the space that you're in. Oh, thank you, <laughs> patience. Thank you for this beautiful moment and cheers. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> to, to an amazing afternoon and to an amazing moment. And cheers to you. Thank and cheers to uh, Between Coffee and Wine. Yeah. Um, I encourage mm -hmm. everyone to just come and taste and buy these beautiful bottles of wine that I hear. And for the whiskey drinkers, there is whiskey as well. Yeah, and obviously, amazing coffee as well. Mm. And thank you for a beautiful, beautiful afternoon. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To life. <laughs> to life. <laughs> Always. Just a few fun facts. <laughs> so, number one, what's your favorite color and why? Huh. My favorite color used to be blue. Hence the blue blazer. Mm. But um, because I've been designing spaces, I, I, I love vibrant colors. I, yeah. So I've been experimenting with, with colors. So blue is my go-to color. 
any other safe. time. It's safe. It's mm. my safe color. Mm. But now I experiment with a lot of color, mm. especially in spaces that I want people to be in. Mm. Mm. So if we're going to pick a dress right now and we're going for dinner and we're like, okay, pick a dress. What color would be right now? Blue. Blue. Okay. Blue. All right. Safe space. <laughs> All right. Animal. What's your favorite animal and Dog. why? Dog. A dog? Yeah, my okay. um, dogs are loyal. Why do people always say that? I was bitten by a dog, so I don't like dogs. <laughs> I'm not it a fan. It was loyal to its owner. Okay. <laughs> what did you do to the dog? No, and, I, and, and they kept saying, no, don't worry, it doesn't bite, and it bit me. <laughs> so because of that, I, I, I'm got terrible. A I've got a phobia for dogs. My daughters have been... I mean, for the past, I don't know how many years. Let's get a dog. I don't want. Yeah. No matter how small it is, I no. don't trust dogs. No, I love dogs because dogs are owned by their owners where cats are. They own their owners. And I, 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 I don't like to be clustered. And I feel claustrophobic with, with, with cats. They're in your space. They sneak up on you. So I don't, I don't like. But dogs can be trained. Um, dogs are very loyal. I've got a beautiful dog called Dodge. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. And, our, and funny enough, our guest last week was also talking about dogs and how they're men's best friend. I'm yeah, like, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. We'll see. I don't trust. Um, what are you reading right now? Atomic Habits. Why? Um, I, I was in corporate for a very long time. Mm. Um, and so certain things become habit. And you... So I was trying to break certain habits um, and come up with my own set of habits. And that book has taught me on forming of habits, what, what speaks to you, uh, forming a habit. And it's been an interesting read. And it's, it's, it's helping me break from my usual um, thing. So Atomic Habits has really... It opened up my mind. Yeah, I know. I'm also currently reading it. I, mean, I, I yeah. love it. It's it's made it's made me realize and question a lot of some of the habits that I some of the habits that yeah. I do. Yeah. So and then one more thing: if we were to pack our bags right now mm -hmm. and we say, let's go, let's go fly away. Which mm. country would we be going to? Mozambique. Yay. Maputo. Yay. <laughs> For the seafood and, and the wine, the, and the seafood and the wine and the beachfront, they've oh, wow. got the 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 widest and the the, the longest beachfront, and it's in Africa. I mean, the sun, the beach, the seafood, the wine, um, and for me also, I do multiple destination travel. I don't go to one country and and park. So if I think of Maputo, I can be in Swaziland in under two hours. I can be in South Africa in under two hours. I can be back in Zim in under two hours. So. Yes, you're my kind of person. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Maputo any day. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, no, thank you for that. And um, thank you for your interview. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> what an amazing you know, afternoon that we've had. And... We've had an amazing bottle of wine, and I, th I think I should have gotten you to take us through this wine. Yeah. It really is a beautiful bottle of wine. And catch us next week uh, with our next guest. And thank you to the subscribers, and thank you to those who've been watching. Uh, please do follow us, do subscribe, and we're really excited about the journey that we're on. Good afternoon. <laughs> Hi, everyone. You've been watching uh, Moments with Nyinge Terai. Please remember to subscribe and to turn on your notifications and to just follow me on all my social media platforms. Thank you.